This week we're in Las Vegas, Nevada, and we're talking about the struggle to produce more and more content. We can't stop here. This is bat country. How much for the hit? Bats and huge manta rays coming down on the car. This is not a reasonable place to bark. When you drive the four hours from Los Angeles to Las Vegas, you have a lot of time to think. Today I'm thinking about how challenging it is to keep up with the ever-increasing content demands on us as creators. That every single day we have to be putting out something new to not even get ahead, but to simply keep pace with the industry. The content ratchet has increased to a point where just trying to keep up can consume all of your life's free time. It's a consistent residual stress that we all have to deal with if we don't want to become abandoned businesses on the side of the road. But at least those abandoned businesses are interesting for photography. If you're into the abandoned roadside America, just outside of Las Vegas, there are a number of cities that you can drive to and do a day trip and find abandoned spaces like this hotel behind us. I think overall, the dirtier and the just more direct the sun and the light look, uh, the more it kind of adds to the scene rather than distract from the scene, which if you're in a portrait situation and you're trying to photograph in this style of light, it's not really gonna work out. But buildings out in the hot sun, I feel like it works really well. With me, I have the 24 to 70 2.8 for Nikon Z series, and it is really all you need when you're out for a walk like this. Uh, 35 millimeter would also be my second choice, I guess, for photography of this style. Greek Best Euros sign. Uh, the Greek Best Euros place has actually moved, and it's one of my favorite stops here. But right now, we're going to photograph their old sign that's up here. The deep blue sky here is really working well, so anything photographed away from the sun this way just looks really, really incredibly blue. And I like that a lot. I kind of like the symmetry of what's going on here. There's three tables. I feel like groups of three are always a good thing for photos. And the background is also very centered. Let's continue on. On the scale of abandon to destruction, I feel like this building has been a little bit too vandalized by humans. The way the framing is actually coming together actually kind of works pretty well. And then there are some places that are so far gone that they've become quite interesting again. And this is an example of that just off Mountain Springs Road here. Really a big fan of this sign and the way that it contrasts specifically with the sky, the nice blue sky and that natural contrast of kind of the, the orangey red of the sign is gonna be really cool. Uh, as well as we're gonna see what we can get up to over here because this is a pretty crazy, this is a pretty crazy scene. Definitely some interesting things going on here and uh, we're gonna continue our journey back to Las Vegas. Driving into Vegas, you are hit with a lot of content. These casinos, restaurants, clubs, and shows, they all have dedicated marketing and content teams. As solo creators though, it all just kind of falls on us. We have to do everything and it's overwhelming. It's kind of like you're on a treadmill that you can't get off, that if you stop, your business will fail, but you also can't really seem to get ahead, regardless of how fast you produce more content. If I can give you any advice, it is that it really is the long game. Commit to doing what's reasonable for you and keep at it over time. Batch process and sit down once a month to schedule everything out. That way it becomes a once a month task rather than that everyday treadmill. We just got back from our drive and it is perfect conditions out here right now. And we are kind of scrambling to find the best spot to go right now. This is 10 out of 10 conditions and I don't think we'll see this again for the rest of the trip. So no time to prepare, just go out. Get it done. Venetian looks amazing right now. I might stop here and grab one handheld shot. So that's the bridge right there I think that we're gonna get to. On my camera, I have my 24 to 70 F2.8. And these are just gonna be handheld frames. Keep it easy. Wow, that looks incredible. Encore and wind down there. Whew. Okay, let's get to that bridge. The bridge is completely empty, nobody's up here the most perfect blue hour sunset I've ever seen. And no one is taking advantage of it from this bridge, which means either nobody's found it yet or it's just a bad angle. The challenge here is that the glass is kind of dirty. If you ever are struck with dirty glass, 
If you can get your lens as close to it as possible, and also shoot wide open if possible. This works okay, but not quite as well as I expected it to coming up here, unfortunately. All right, blue hour has officially started. What I'm gonna do right now is take a great, almost commercial image of Mirage, of the waterfall coming down here with Mirage in the background. Mirage is where my wife, Lindsay, and I got engaged, so I think this image has meaning to us. It was New Year's Eve. Watch the fireworks from here. And for this photo specifically, I'm gonna do an eight second exposure, and I'm just gonna bring my f-stop down. I'm not going to put on an ND. I don't really have time for it. If I would've had a little bit more time, I'd have thought about it. And then I'm going to set a release to five seconds on the self timer so my camera can kind of stabilize before it takes the photo. And that's all from Blue Hour today in Las Vegas. Uh, I've noticed as a travel photographer that you really have to take advantage of whatever is happening. That if, you, if we would have let that go, there's a pretty good chance that we're not gonna get anything that good for the rest of the trip. So always be aware, always try to make it happen when you can. And even if you're not 100% prepared and ready to go, just get in there and start making photos and, and see what comes out and keep iterating from there until you're happy with the results. I then met up with my friend Jeff Batari, who simultaneously has two of the coolest photography jobs in the world. A photographer for UFC the Ultimate Fighting Championship and also the team photographer for the Vegas Golden Knights. So, and here we are, dude. So rinkside, uh, you know, it's, it's a three hour, four hour uh, pregame setup. Get your, your computer set up, get the camera set up, and then we make our photo positions for everybody, uh, for whoever is covering the game. So we manage the photo positions on that end. So it's a lot more than just showing up to the game, shooting the game, sending images, and you're gone. It's going back to uh, UFC, any given fight night, uh, we're there at least three hours ahead of the first fight uh, minimum. If we have to do remote cameras or anything more substantial, we'll get there at least five five to six hours. So I'm shooting from the actual top of the octagon. And then we also have media uh, lower level, just kneeling, they call them prayer benches. They're basically padded uh, areas that you're kind of literally just hunkered in, shooting below through the cage. For the most part, I shoot above and I run ethernet cable from that position uh, down through the floor, tape it down across the cable crossover, run it back to my computer media row, or if it's a bigger event, we'll have on-site editors. And then it's a much larger system that's set up where everything that's coming out of my camera goes backstage to a team of editors and they're editing in real time, sending it for social.com, uh, Getty images for the distribution for news purposes and all that fun stuff. Wow, will that be tomorrow night? That will be tomorrow night. Nice. So we got Conor McGregor and Donald Cowboy Cerrone squared off for the main event. So yeah, Conor's first fight back in a few years to UFC. So it's gonna be a fun one. All eyes are gonna be on the event and it's gonna be a, 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 cool, a cool experience. Jeff is one of the most interesting photographers I know, and he'll for sure be back for a longer segment in the future. He produces so many images in such a high pressure environment and gets them out within minutes to the end user. In some ways, this is completely overwhelming, but in other ways, maybe it's easier. That with such hard deadlines, he knows when he has to deliver. Whereas myself as a solo creator, it really doesn't matter to anyone other than myself. I post today. It's really hard to stay motivated in this content economy, and it's something that I struggle with every single day. My advice is to give yourself hard deadlines for the things that you need to get done, and don't stress out too much about the non-essentials. Being a creative can easily consume your entire life, and it's important to find the work-life balance that is right for you. No one has it figured out, and it will always be a work in progress as your life and your business evolve. Thanks for joining us here today in Vegas, and we'll see you next week.